I have BenQ newest entry SW display, SW242Q. This is their latest 24 inch hardware calibrated display for photographers that can show 99% Adobe RGB. It is the direct replacement for the SW240 and is something that we have been waiting for a long time. The connection has been upgraded. The panel is amazing quality and I believe is also a matted panel as well. Very similar to the SW272 series that we have seen before and also the SW3021C bringing us up another level. But what we're going to really do is unbox this display so you can really see what this looks like. and. I'll plug this in and give you my first impression as well. Let's find out. I'm Art and Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Full disclosure, I am BenQ Pro Display Global Ambassador, which includes their PD Pro Designer Series display and their SW Hardware Calibrated display for photographers, which I am about to unbox. BenQ sent me this unit to do an unboxing, review, long-term testing, and calibration tutorials, which I'll be releasing on my channel. All the opinions you're about to hear regarding this display are solely my own. So BenQ have introduced a lot of new features into this update to the SW240 and I think it is going to be really amazing. So for instance, we are going to get USB Type-C with 90 watts power delivery and BenQ is also including their fine coated panel with this new model. Let's open this up. The first thing we get are the various box content and because this is an SW, it really just opens from the top. You would use Palette Master Ultimate software to do the calibration and for this 24 inch model, the shading hood is an optional thing. So it's not included like the 27 inches or the 32 inch SW display, but you can see all the content in the box there. And as usual, it comes with its own individual calibration report and let's see what that is looking like. So. For this SW242Q, I am getting a panel that has an average Delta E of 0.55. That is really amazing. And a max Delta E of 1.68. Remember that usually a max Delta E is really just only for one color. So we are really getting a great panel with an amazing uniformity as well. And this is also using BenQ latest AccuColor uniformity technology in this panel too. Peeling the onion layer, what we have is the cover. This is going to be, I would say design-wise, very similar to the 272Q and 242U, the way how they designed this. And we can start to see the glimpse of it already from, for example, the port cover. So this is the back cover for all the ports. Right below that, we have the arm. And pretty much we can see from the industrial design that the arm is kind of a hybrid actually. It's between the SW series and also the PD series where this on the PD series is pretty much right in the middle. This is the part taken from the PD where on the 242U and Q is on the base. So a little bit different there. It also say photo view right there. And this is also where you would grab the display as well. So this is where the handle is. Let's go deeper. Now, one thing that I want to share with you briefly when you unbox a BenQ display is that if you use these lift handles, they come with a little tab there. What you want to do is pull that tab out and pull this lift handle out on both sides. This way, when you pull out the box content, it doesn't get stuck on the handle. It's really a nice security feature if you really ask me. So that's one thing that you should be aware of. And let's see here, I already pulled this out. Am I missing something? All right, this is a little bit tight. So underneath what we have is pretty much what we are used to before in the SMB display. So we have the base. This is pretty much the base. What you see there, there is the word photo view engraved right there. I genuinely wish that they made this letterette option engraved 
option that we can really go out and choose to customize our own, charge me a little bit more. I would love to have my name on it. I mean, similar to the ambassador display that I have in box, but I really wish they made this for all of you. Now I can tell you right now that if you take a look at the base, this is a little bit thicker on the back, a little bit thinner on the front. So it is tapering a little bit more and it's made out of plastic on the very top, even though the base itself is made out of, you know, metal on the bottom there. So the design is a little bit different than the SW272 series, the U and the Q. So what we're simply gonna do right now is link this together, just align that, put it in, and what you're gonna simply do is just tightening up this screw on the very bottom. Hand tightening this is perfectly fine. You don't need to really use the screwdrivers or anything. But if you move the display around a lot, I would definitely come in and check this every so often if it does get wobbly or not. All right. So that is pretty much the standard display. The overall industrial design, like I said, it follows really closely with the SW series so far. So that's good to see. And because it doesn't come with a shading hood, but it does come with a few other accessories, pretty much you have the cleaning cloth because this is now the fine coated panel, which is a true matte panel, something that will differentiate BenQ SV line from any other hardware calibrated displays that are out there. You have a little bit of the manual, you have the offer for one year premium Pantone Connect. So if you get this and you're a designer, this is definitely something for you. And on the back, there is a link to download Palette Master Ultimate, which I made so many videos already. And in addition to this, this particular model now comes with paper color sync. So this marks the conclusion for paper color sync that started with the SW321 series and now have gone through the entire SW series. So every single model now have paper color sync. Right below that, we just have cables, HDMI, full display port to full display port, the power cord for the display. We have a USB type C to USB type C, and we're going to find out how long this is because I am really curious which was the link they include there. And we also have a USB type A to USB type B. This is for those that need to use another type of connector such as display port and you need to use an uplink cable. And now we get to the panel. I am going to pull the panel out. And in fact, what we're gonna do is let's take the box down because we don't need that anymore. So here is the panel. A quick setup guide where all the connectors would go, how you set up the stand. Kind of interesting though that you have to pull all the parts together before you get to this quick start guide. I wish this quick start guide would be at the very top so that you can really see the steps to put the stand together before you go through this. Or because you watched my video, you already know what to do, so that's perfectly fine. You can link all these different accessories up to the display. We'll go over some of the connectors a little bit more. But what I'm simply going to do now is link the display up to the stand and the way how we would simply do that hopefully this camera will be able to capture that, is that we would put this in just pretty much at an angle in fact what i'm going to do is a little bit different so this is how i'm going to do it i'm going to put this display down like so let's take all these stickers out for now or covers and simply what i'm going to do is take these hook them up at the very top like so insert it in and pretty much this just snaps into place. If you want to release this, there is a button right there on the display. So you can do that. And by the way, these are VESA 100 by 100 compatible as well. There's a screw that's right there. So you can simply just put a plate on and use an arm mount if you want. And if you don't want to use this space. So this is pretty much the SW242Q. So as usual, I'm going to reset my studio. Give me just a moment. I'll link this up to my computer. We'll talk about some of the connections and everything, and then we'll wrap up this unboxing. I'm about to link up this SW242Q to my laptop, but before I do that, I'd like to share with you some environmental facts. The LED backlight used in these panels are mercury free. The plastic casing is BFR and PVC free. The packaging that I just unboxed, they have been using eco-friendly ink, and you will notice that they're using a lot of paper cardboard instead of foam, which is really a great thing. The foam usage inside the packaging is extremely minimal just to protect the panel. 
The only feedback I have though is that the cables and the wires still come in a plastic bag and if we could find a way not to put them in plastic bags all together, I think that would be even better. Now as far as the USB Type-C cable go, this is about five feet or so. It's not really quite six, but it is a good enough length. Now the other thing I want to do is show you the connection on the display before I pretty much link this whole thing up and also take the cover off. So let's take a look at the back of our panel upside down a little bit so we can see where all the interesting connectors are for this particular SW242Q. So we have the power connector that is pretty much right there, HDMI, full-size display port, USB Type-C, and USB Type-B uplink. This is pretty much the back of the display and it is also where you will put the cover as well once you have all the wires in. Now, in addition to that, we have a power button. This is going to be the right-hand side of the display, two extra buttons, a five-way joystick, also another button, and we also have a headphone out. This is 3.5 millimeter. Do note that these displays do not have speakers built in, so you can try to bring the volume up forever. If you choose to have the display sound output, it has to be output through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It does have a DAC in here, but it does not have speakers built in two USB 3.1 and you also have an SD card reader and if the SW272 series is something to go by chances are your SD card readers would also go in backwards. Let's turn on this SW242Q. You'll see a BenQ splash screen. I am going to plug in my USB Type-C cable. This is a cable that we have been waiting for a long time to come to this 24 inch model. Now you might hear that ping and if you take a look on your laptop right now it's showing that it's charging however we're not seeing the signal. With all SW series display and some PD, it does not come with input source auto detect. So this is nothing to panic, but the very first time what you need to do is choose the input source you want to use. Simply go to the joystick. I am going to choose USB-C, press on it, and now it's going to show me the signal from the laptop. So this one singular cable is providing 90 watts of power to my computer. It's carrying the display signal and also the I.O. for the headphone jack, the two USB 3.1 and the SD card slot that's on the left side of the display. Really amazing connectivity. Now the other thing we have to know about this display is the coding. This is something that we really can't escape from and it's something that I really like to talk about. You can see right now as I'm rotating the panel, this is using BenQ fine coded panel, the same one they're using in the SW272 series. It's really amazing. It's as if you're looking at a matted sheet of paper. And what I can also do is bring a source such as a flashlight. And if I shine this on the display, you can see that it's barely reflecting anything. Yes, you will still see the light source, but it's reflecting very little, the environment that is in. However, if I show you this and compare this to, for example, a 16 inch MacBook Pro with a glossy display, and I also bring this up, you can see that the light source is much more defined where this is really just diffusing the light. You can see the shape of the Octobox that I am using in the studio right now, whereas on this one, it's just a diffuse light. But if I'm just looking at this right now, it looks like a matte sheet of paper, which is exactly what you want. I will also say that it's great to be editing on a matte display as well. Now, some of you may not agree. It could be a personal opinion, but from my experience doing this for over 20 years, I can tell you right now that on a glossy display, it has a tendency to increase contrast and saturation right away. So what we tend to do is we tend to take our image edit to maybe about 60%. It looks really great. Apple display have a tendency to flatter our image or make it look more flattering, right? So we're not pushing our image to the full extent of the edit. When you look at something on, for example, an SW hardware calibrated display, this is really giving you an honest assessment of what your image look like. So if you take your image and edit on your SW display, it may not look as good right away, but if you can get something that looks amazing on these display, take it to any glossy display out there, including mobile devices, it's going to look amazing. So even though you may not be doing any type of printing, it's still a great idea to get one of these displays to use in the studio. Now, we need to talk about some of the menu systems on this display because it's taken directly from the 272 series something that I really like because the menu system is really modern. In fact, the one thing I like best about the 272 series is the information button and BenQ have also built that in. The second button from the right, which is the one next to the power button, you press on that, it will give you the information screen. This information screen is really great because if you run the calibration on the various slot with Palette Master Ultimate and you don't remember the setting, it will tell you everything you need to know. Color gamut, luminance, contrast, and all the other information that you use during your calibration. 
a user information to have at your fingertip. Now, when it comes to the panel itself, this is a 24 inch 2K IPS LED backlight. It has a max brightness of 400 nits. And if you are a photographer, most of the time you're gonna be editing between 80 to 120 nits anyway, it's going to be fine. Although with this 400 nits brightness, it does have support for HDR10 and HLG. The contrast ratio for this panel is 1001. And one thing that you might want to note is that the aspect ratio is not 16 to nine, but rather 16 to 10. And that is 2560 by 1600. Something to note there because it is a little bit taller than the 16 to nine aspect ratio display, something to keep in mind. The panel itself can show 99% Adobe RGB. This is something that we have expected from the SFU display line for a very long time, and we still do have that. 100% sRGB and 98% P3 color gamut. It has a 16-bit 3D lookup table, so you can use Palette Master Ultimate to do a true hardware calibration. Calman or Light Illusion software will work with this display too. And there are different color modes on this display. So if we take a look at all the different color mode options, there's also the Mbook color mode that is assigned to match that of any Apple built-in display or any Apple display for that matter. Now, if you have this display, I highly recommend you run a custom calibration and use Adobe RGB instead. This way you get the most out of your display. But if you want to match it your MacBook, you can certainly do that with Mbook color mode. It's obviously Mac compatible because I'm linking this to my Mac right now. And the other thing is that this marks the completion for all the SVU series to have paper color sync. Now, paper color sync, if you're unfamiliar with it, is a quick mode that you can throw your display into. It puts your display white point at 5,000 Kelvin or D50. So what you can do is if you print something out, you can get a preview on your display, what this looks like. And then afterwards, what you would simply do is view the print that's coming out from your printer using a 5,000 Kelvin light. And you should be able to see something that's really close between print and display matching. And that's the whole goal of paper color sync. But I'm glad that it's have now come to all the SW series in the lineup. Lastly, what I really want to talk about this display is the price point. I don't normally talk about price point in my unboxing or to review of the product, but I feel that this is compelling enough. So this is retailing in the US for $479. Now this is US currency. Pricing will differ in every country and territory, but this is a good entry into a hardware calibrated display to get something that's really great right away. And this can work for every single type of photographers from the beginners to the seasoned professional. Now, let me tell you why, because the price point here, if you are a student and you're just starting out, you wanna get a really great display. I think this is an awesome display for you to get because number one is really a price conscious display that offers an amazing value for what you're really paying for, right? So if you're a little bit limited on budget, you're just starting on photography, maybe you're not soon, that's perfectly fine. This would be a great display for you. For seasoned professionals, Let's say you do shoot on location a lot. For example, I do headshots on location a lot and I like to show my clients what is coming out from my camera. I can simply bring one of these into my session and I have a matted display. They see exactly what they look like, minimize reflection and environment. And this is something, like I said, that will work for seasoned professional like myself or someone starting out. It can be a portable display, it can be a secondary display, it can be a display that you mount to a cart in your studio and can move around with you. There are so many uses for this. Yes, it may be the smallest SW display in the lineup. It may also be the most valued SW display in the lineup at the same time because it has so many uses for so many different group of individuals, for so many groups of photographers. And I think it's compelling because of that reason alone. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this unboxing. I'll be doing the full review of this display in the near future. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. If there's something you want me to test, do let me know. Leave them in the comments section below. If you have any questions, do the same thing. Give this a like, subscribe and the bell if you're new and help me trust.